for, for plebs, by plebs, dropping the Bitcoin only signal. Pleb underground. Welcome everyone to the Pleb Underground. Pleb Underground, it's EP93. Possession is real if you can sign keys. Kept sovereign, custody threat not benign. Bees, value increasing, store it cold, please. They just want to deny our freedom of speech. They just want the freedom to preach. All of their lies steal. Freedom to leech. I want freedom of each and every soul. Freedom to teach. Aspirational living. Freedom to reach. New heights. Giving. Freedom to beseech. Take self-responsibility for the freedom to beach. I'm a man because I stand by my word. Listen to my words, not what you think I've inferred. In the beginning, there was only thy word. Now there's plants everywhere. Is it the third day? Acting irrational as if they're absurd. Please learn and set theory. Their rationale is absurd. Ain't nothing rational about fractional reserve. It's a bittersweet symphony, so I'll keep popping verve. Orange label gets some VCP. No orange fable gets some Riz VP. She likes the way I let her VCP. Venture capital money, that's VCP. Sometimes I scroll, what did BTC? There's more to life than BTC. Got a win in life, can't get beat easy. Shout out the calendar, I couldn't BTC. We look at the numbers, what's on TCC? Look over the stats, what did TCC? Dot the I, cross the T, CC, no carbon copy, he came to CC. Walton, I, I think that was one of the most entertaining and, and fun... <laughs> Fun rap rhymes, whatever you want to call it, that I've heard you do, man. Absolutely amazing. That's right, guys. We've got fellow Bitcoiner and the creator of Time Chain Calendar. That's right, guys. We've got Mr. Time Chain himself, TC. TC, man, thank you so much for coming back on the show. We're trying to figure out what is up. What's up, guys? It's great What's to up? be back. Thank you for having me. Of course. Of course. We were trying to figure out how many times you've been on the show. Um, before and i think we right. agreed it's on like, the number it's, it's three appropriate that the first section is called the numbers then huh like uh right yeah. speaking of which speaking of which let, let's just dive right into it we're gonna move yeah, it the right numbers on brought over to us. <laughs> come on come on let me do it let me do it the number the numbers brought to us by time chain stats and time chain calendar time chain calendar with some recent updates this week, the numbers. This week, we have TC, the creator, joining us. Uh, Phil, let's have a look at the numbers this week. And TC, I want I want you to talk us through some of the new numbers on Time Chain Calendar. He just introed my intro. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Here we go. Walton's on fire today. You can tell. You can tell. We're going to get a lot of spice from Walton today. All right. At the time of this recording, the block height is... 849,845, the Bitcoin fiat exchange, 60,930 and some change. My favorite ratio right here, the Big Macs to BTC, 11,831. Just to, so you guys know, we're getting like a thousand less Big Macs than last week. Very weak. Anyways, total public lightning capacity, 5,172 BTC, fastest fee all of the ridiculous shitcoining on Bitcoin, not going to make it. 11 sats per V-byte. Moscow time, 1641. Boom. The numbers. Got some funny I numbers mean, though today. That, that yeah. was time chain, time chain uh, stats, not time chain calendar. And so it's going to be difficult for yeah, TC to... Uh, you know, to 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 talk us through those numbers, but, but I know, maybe... but we we use time chain stats for the numbers, we, even we though it's do. brought we to use... us by both of them. We, uh, <laughs> I mean, I've always I always use both, but anyway, let me let me oh. let me share let yeah. me share my screen. Let's do the time uh, chain calendar. And and I think I'm doing this right. TC, there's more numbers. What's happening? Well, uh, I released just uh, I believe it's three days ago version 0 0.5, which introduces some really significant UI updates. And we have a few stats that are new. Uh, and uh, really, as far as stats go, one of the biggest changes is just uh, the organization of the information that's on this dashboard. Um, I'll get to that in just a second. First, I'd like to just draw your attention to the main circles interface. And we have two new circles on this interface. There were three before, and there's five now. And essentially, 
we've got a new little circle on the inside there. By the way, if you look at Time Chain Calendar on mobile, that little circle that's currently green will show up below the main circle's interface. Just ran out of space when that thing shrinks down to a smaller screen. But on desktop, as we're looking at Walton's uh, screen sharing here, we see that little timer. And that circle is a 10-minute cycle. And what you're seeing is, to the second, the amount of time since the last block. And you're going to see that that thing changes colors every time it laps around 10 minutes. So watch it turn orange and then red as we get to this. Every once in a while, you get a block that takes an hour or more to uh, to arrive. And so we've basically got a visualization now that keys in on uh, how long it's been since the last block. Uh, so that is a, a new circle on the inside. And then to go to the opposite end of the spectrum on the outside, in very thin, dark orange, we have supply percentage. That is basically covering from the top 12 o'clock position all the way around to about an 11 o'clock position. You can see the entire supply issuance of Bitcoin. And we have these little notches that represent the halvings. You'll notice the first notch is all the way down at the bottom at the six o'clock position. And the second notch is all the way at the nine o'clock position. And you can see the halvings visually represented there. Now, what's really a trip, and Walton, I don't know if you can do this while I'm describing it, but if you grab the slider at the bottom and you start sliding the slider to the left, you're going to notice both the halving circle move, but you'll also notice the supply rolling back through those halvings. Keep going yes. all the way until the top. Keep going. And you're oh going to see God. the supply actually all the way back to Genesis block. This is a, a really sort of powerful visualization yes. of the supply issuance of Bitcoin That's relative quite to a the good trivia question. When Bitcoin when Bitcoin started, how much Bitcoin was there? And it's not zero, exactly. it's fifty. Right? And it's not. Exactly. But and so now go back spendable. the other way. But none of it was spendable, which is a nice one as well. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so, so cool. as you as you move through that timeline, you can essentially really clearly see in a visual way the issuance of Bitcoin and the relationship of the issuance to the halvings. Uh, also, you'll notice when you move that slider, the supply is changing on the fly, the subsidy is changing on the fly in the upper left corner. So really what we've done here is, is create a very nice visualization of some important metrics, but it's also kind of a, a very powerful educational tool, in my opinion, as far as say, say you run into a, a friend or family member who just doesn't know the first thing about Bitcoin, this is possibly the place to start teaching them about Bitcoin, is you look at that giant number in the middle, that's the current block height, and you ask a very simple question, well, what is a block? And a block does these two really important things. It confirms transactions to the, the blockchain, the time chain, but it also issues new Bitcoin. And as you saw when you went all the way back to Genesis, 50 Bitcoin. And then the very next block, 50 more Bitcoin, and so on and so forth, until the first halving when it gets cut to 25 Bitcoin per block. And so that's a really good place, in my opinion, to start having people understand what is even happening here. What, what is this blockchain? What is Bitcoin? And its, and its issuance and its supply are so critical to its value proposition. So anyways, I really, really wanted to add this kind of longer time frame in a circle to the interface. And so now check this out, guys. We've got in the very center, we've got 10 minutes intervals or 10 minute cycle since the last block. Then you have that uh, circle with all the little squares on it. That's so the last 24 so hours of blocks. 22. Right. And that's why it's now being taken over by orange. Right. Come on, so we're into the we're into the third cycle of 10 minutes already on this next block, right? Yeah. So, but but follow me. We've got that 10 minute timer in the middle, and then you've got the 24 hours of blocks. It looks like a little dotted circle that goes around on the inside. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the the two week cycle of the difficulty adjustment, the red circle. And then you've got the four year cycle of the halvings. That's the orange circle. And now you've got the lifetime of Bitcoin supply issuance as the dark orange outside circle that will never complete during our lifetime. It's going to take over a hundred years for um, that supply circle to ever get all the way to the top. So um, this is a nested time.
time frame interface that now is really got five levels of time frames and the UI to me is finally coming into its uh, potential as far as being able to visualize uh, these mm -hmm. aspects of Bitcoin. I have a question. Are we just segueing into the, the 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 fireside chat, Phil? What do you think? Yeah, we're, like, we're pretty much just gonna. This is just yeah. continuous. All right. So, yeah. Phil, but hold on, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right. Wait. But wait. But wait. 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 Come on. Okay. One last question. One question. One question. When? When? Time chain calendar arm piece because i see this oh, thing you being fucker. i was what i was gonna say when Damn watch oh, when sorry. watch tc that's my question you <sighs> sorry it's okay it's all right oh, sorry. but yeah good okay question. i love it, you guys yeah, yeah good question philip um beautiful question <laughs> when well, where, where, where did you come across that idea <laughs> well you guys you guys it, it it is clear to me and most other people that look at this thing that it does evoke a kind of a clock visually i would However, wear this tc i know you would i, would. I, I know you would <laughs> okay um as far <laughs> as answering your question uh two weeks of course it's always two weeks uh no the the uh the wearable the wearable like uh, on your wrist has mm. actually been bumped on the roadmap further back i do plan on doing the the watch uh it's not the first priority right now uh it will come down the road I, I beg your patience on that one. But very the question itself is very uh, important to me because, you know, th this project, Time Chain Calendar, was heavily inspired by the block clock. You know, when, when you really boil it down, you're looking at my version of a block clock. It's basically showing you the current block height. I give you all this functionality for kind of exploring through past blocks. But um, really, when the when the app is just loaded and sitting there, it functions as a, a live dashboard, a live block clock. But to me, and this is where the in, like inception of the project really came about, and the, and the name of the project, is it not more of a calendar than a clock? Because especially, I was just describing the uh, the supply and the whole lifetime of Bitcoin, and this is not necessarily. A clock. This is a calendar. This is marking much larger time frames. And does doesn't Bitcoin encourage us to have a low time preference and to embrace this idea of, you know, really looking at time in a in a different way? So, um, to me, just the simple question of when clock really makes me go back to that thinking about, you know, this this really functions as a time chain calendar to kind of w march you through time through your lifetime through bitcoin's existence um think about a calendar a calendar's got you know days of the week and it's got weeks and months and it's got months and years it's it's a nested time frame kind of thing whereas a clock just kind of spins in circles over a you know a 12 or a 24 hour period you know to me this is a calendar and so in so many ways, um, I, I just kind of get reminded what my mission is with this project when I, when I think about those kind of things. Very cool. Very cool. And you know I what? I think you haven't seen enough weird clocks then. Like, to be yeah. honest, that, like I was going to say, I would wear a calendar. Some clocks that aren't like, uh, I can't think what the word is. Like they, they're like purely mechanical and, and, and don't. They don't necessarily tell the exact time all the time. They they tell like the approximate time or something like right. this. Yeah. There's like there's some yeah there's some uh, different kind of I don't know different kind of things out there. And to me, it's like that's kind of a little bit like blocks in that like blocks don't come evenly spaced. Not at know. all. And I feel so, like time doesn't really feel like it passes it in an even way either, right? Like there's certain parts um, where time feels like it's flying, and certain hey, times hey, where pull it up like the calendar crawling. again. Um, pull, pull up the interface again because you know honestly like it was version 0 0.3 where i i i launched that 24 hours of blocks circle on the inside and one of the coolest things about that feature is just to see and kind of focus your your well, attention on the irregularity okay. of the blocks mm -hmm. like they're, TC, they're so what, anything what we're gonna regular. do what we're going to do is we're going to cut to an ad and then we're gonna, right. everyone, everyone can Let's hear go. all about this special feature in uh, 0.3. Get paid, you um, guys. Let's go.
That's right, guys. This wraps up the numbers, and we are going to move it on over to the Fireside Chat. The Fireside Chat is brought to you by CypherSafe. Check them out at cyphersafe.io. Are you a pet rock enjoyer like I am? Love the collectibles. Check this out. 16 ounces of solid titanium. The Bitcoin Rolo Triangle. That's right. Pet Rock Enjoyers in disbelief. Here it is. 16 ounces of solid titanium. Get it at cyphersafe.io. That is the Bitcoin Rolo Triangle. All right, guys. You know who's with us. We're diving into the fireside chat. We are talking all things time chain calendar. And where we left off was the uh, in-depth philosophical conversation that we were having. Um, the point that TC was making about the clock and his mission with time chain calendar. So we're going to put that on hold if it's okay with you guys. We're going to rewind, back it up, right? And... We're going to get TC to kind of start for us a little bit at the beginning because now Time Chain Calendar, right, is what, almost two years old? Yeah, it's about a year and a half. Uh, I launched it in November of 22. So November this year will make two years since the project's been around. Uh, we were talking before uh, recording here about how that feels like it's been a lot longer than it is. But uh, but yeah, that's the... Um, that's the age of the project, about a year and a half. Very nice. So let's, I mean, why did you, uh, you know, why did you start it? So well, give, give that's the viewers, a great, give, yeah, give yeah the that's a, it's a great this, question. Right? You know, I, I would say it's largely in part to two main sort of um, paths that my life has taken. Uh, one is the longer path, which is, my sort of career path as a uh, engineer, uh, I, a more specifically a web front end engineer, I've spent uh, the better part of the last 15 years coding websites and then web applications. And I've been a front end engineer in that uh, career. And basically that means I focus on the UI and the actual presentation part of um, these projects that I've built. And, you know, to a large degree, I've been working on other people's stuff all these years, building websites for different clients and more recently working for a variety of startup companies, even a couple Bitcoin companies and, and doing front end work to develop UI and interfaces and, and all kinds of neat stuff for a whole bunch of different projects. And, uh, you know, that path collided with my path as a Bitcoiner where I have basically been um, aware of Bitcoin and very closely paying attention to it uh, these last many years, um, especially, I would say, the last four years where I've been really, um, you know, a maximalist and um, diving as deeply as I can into understanding how the Bitcoin protocol works. So when a particular uh, event occurred in my career, about a year and a half ago, and I was suddenly no longer working for the company that I was working for, and I found myself with the time, it um, really just kind of occurred to me that uh, it was a great opportunity to uh, build out my own project. I had had this idea in my head for maybe almost a year prior to that, where I was thinking about this idea of a web-based block clock type project where I wanted to see the block height and other information about what's on chain in a very particular way. I have so much respect and gratitude for several other projects that are along this vein um, worth mentioning our uh, mempool space, which most Bitcoiners are very familiar with, sort of the legends and, and, and icons and OGs of this kind of uh, path, uh, Clark Moody's dashboard is another one that I've really been using for years and really appreciate the sort of breadth of information and um, how it was all organized there. Um, there is a project that's lesser known, but I think is super cool, which is Bitfeed. That's another yeah. web-based um, sort of visualizer of, of Bitcoin. And and so each was of these Mono things... Not? Before he got like... That is Mononaut. 
that's modern art before he joined Mm -hmm. mempool space and mempool space ended up getting that bit feed style interface on their site as a result i like the south part of it as well which i know isn't you know not quite the same sort of thing but you know the these these like block explorers the train station yeah yeah Yeah, that that one's great so yeah there's there's a ton of these kind of web visualizers of of on-chain data that I, I've been a fan of for so long. And, you know, just as somebody who works in that field of, you know, developing the web and doing HTML and CSS and building UI, I, I developed my own vision in my head about how I would want to present this stuff. So when this event happened where I was no longer working full-time on other people's stuff, this uh, time about a year and a half ago, I, I, basically took the opportunity to dive in and start coding this thing that I had in my head. And um, it literally was nine, 10 days of coding that led to the very first version of time chain calendar. And I launched that. Um, it was early November. It was like the day before the Pacific Bitcoin conference in, in uh, 2022. Um, and I, I, I was flying down there to go to that conference and, I, I made Time Chain Calendar live um, the night before getting on a plane. And uh, it basically was a total prototype. Uh, it's it's come a long way since then, but um, I've just continued to uh, develop this thing and add features and kind of work on what my particular vision for this is. I mean, to be honest, you guys, the Time Chain Calendar is literally a visualizer of what's going on in my head. Like my understanding of Bitcoin, mm-hmm. how I see uh, these concepts, these ideas, and it's it's been a really powerful experience for myself as like a Bitcoiner, um, understanding this thing to have a context like this project to kind of experiment and test out my understanding. And of course, as we know, Bitcoiners are are not keeping uh, criticism to themselves. I, I constantly get input. I constantly get feedback. Sometimes people tell me, hey, the way that you've characterized this could be better or this is wrong. You know, and, and it's a whole feedback loop of um, you know, consistently kind of refining the presentation and you know, all this new stuff I was telling you about that I just launched in this most recent version. You know, that's just the latest place that my my head is at around these things. And it's just going to keep uh, evolving from here, I, I suspect. So I, I think that many Bitcoiners have um, validated that your uh, essentially your concept, your visualizer is very valuable. I mean, we saw some, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we saw some tweets from uh, from guys like uh, like Adam Back that that really appreciate it. Um, I can tell you that for myself, right? I have it on my home screen uh, on my phone and it's not just because you're my homie, but like it's because I genuinely enjoy using it. This is the easiest way for me to look at a significant amount of data phone. simply. My phone. It's on your phone, yeah, like on the on yeah. the like yeah, home screen. Yeah, I haven't yeah, like on it's screen. just like one click like yeah, yeah. that's it. You know, so it's yeah, it it is absolutely. I, I think it's really one of the nicest visualize uh, visualizers that I've seen. Now, let me ask you this though. Maybe this will be like kind of like a, a a tougher question. But as you mentioned, we've seen many visualizers come and go, right? Um, was that was any of that kind of a thought to you as you were developing this project? You know, like, it's like, do I, you know, am I making something that essentially like is, is maybe not, you know, going to be able to branch out into the future because some of those visualizers, like, like the train one, for example, right? Like that's pretty cool. It's, it's very simple. Um, and it doesn't, it, it doesn't have much use. Whereas with time chain calendar, we've seen it expand and you've made it more and more useful. So was that was that a thought to you know was that a thought for you as you were developing this yeah great question i love that question because this is what is constantly on my mind um i have not necessarily initially but kind of as the project has evolved i have refined my sort of mission with it which gives me kind of like a you know, a, a guidance, uh, like a North Star. Anytime I get a new idea, I kind of bounce it off of that North Star and say, is this the right thing to add? Um, I'm dealing with a lot of stuff on the screen at this point, and I have to be very careful about what I add so I don't, you know, make it uh, overboard or something. 
Um, you know, really the, the things that I have thought about, and this goes back to actually my, my web development career, because over 15 years, I built a lot of different websites and I've been, um, you know, exposed to a lot of the challenges that exist with all these different kind of presentations on the web. And what you find as a web developer is that conventions do exist. And I don't mean like a Bitcoin convention where everybody gets together. I mean, <laughs> sort of like patterns that become uh, sort of widely accepted and widely used. And, you know, you could Social creatively norms. come up. Well, it, it's like there, there's iconography is one of the best okay. examples, right? You, you have um, certain norms that you could follow. So like, for instance, if something can be closed, you could come up with a really creative, unique way to indicate this is the button you click to close this thing. Uh, however, if you just use an X, like a ton of people do, that little icon is recognized widely by most of your users and they instantly know what it is. So these are kind of conventions. Uh, you find this thing, another, another sort of context of it uh, is an industry, actually. It's called wayfinding. You ever notice you go oh, yeah. to a hospital or an airport and you want to know where's the where's the bathroom or mm -hmm. uh, where's the where's the fucking uh, a luggage uh, retrieval or whatever you know you 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 need to find your way around a place you've never been before mm -hmm. and how the how intuitive the signage is makes all the difference right so these are kind of concepts that I got from doing web development that I bring to this project because what I actually have discovered that I, is one of my, you know, intentions with this is to try to explore different visualizations and presentation paradigms in, in, a, in an attempt to possibly discover conventions that can be used uh, by other people as well. I mean, I imagine in another 15 years, Bitcoin will be that much more widely adopted. It'll be that much more used. Some of these concepts that we take for granted as Bitcoiners, but you know, a lot of normies don't know, will be more widely known. And what will help that happen is sort of conventions in ways of presenting things or ways that ideas get kind of filtered down to their essence and communicated. And so that's kind of like the spirit of Time Chain Calendar. I'm trying to actually identify what is meaningful and what's important and presenting things in very specific ways to help highlight that. So, you know, you'll notice like the biggest number on the screen is the block height. Mm -hmm. Just through the size of the font, I'm able to like maybe hopefully get your eye to travel there. And, the, and you know, the circles around it really also help draw your attention to that place. And there, there's just a lot of other little details that, you know, I, I've tried to think about what is the best way to, to, to present this to a user in efforts to try to get this intuitive and to get it communicated effectively. And so I, it, it's kind of an aspiration that I, I think that like maybe Time Chain Calendar years from now might help to establish some conventions about how we we communicate these bitcoin ideas i think there's a huge opportunity because there's so much information there mm. and there's so many different ideas there and everybody's got so many different ways of explaining them like maybe we do find some ways so that um you know like it look at look at a calendar for instance just a normal you know calendar of of, of months and weeks and years we see a convention there where anytime you see a calendar, it's usually laid out in that same layout. Mm -hmm. Here's the days of the week. Here's the weeks. Here's the months. And I, I'm kind of thinking in that way. I want to try to find a way to communicate Bitcoin ideas in that in those same kind of like simple, effective, intuitive ways that, you know, maybe other people end up picking up those conventions and 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 you see it spread beyond my project. Yeah, these visualizations are, are kind of like shelling points, right? Like that yeah. that's what that makes me that that's what that makes me think of. So uh let me ask you, uh I guess let me ask you this because as you were talking about uh the circles and you're talking about right where the block height is, uh it got me to think of real estate, right? Like real estate on that page. And of course the inevitable question, right, comes about of advertisers. Um and hmm. I guess so it's kind of like a two-prong question. Uh number one, um, 
have you been approached for advertise uh, you know for advertising on that platform and you know how how have you been handling that and number two i guess following up on that what's been so far your your biggest challenge with um with developing the uh the platform uh great questions uh answer to the question about have i been approached for advertising yes there's been several companies that I've spoken to who expressed uh, really liking uh, the app project and uh, expressed a desire to want to uh, put advertisements or sponsorships on it. And to this point, I've had to turn those people away. To this point, uh, my mission as far as design of Time Chain Calendar has been to try to make it, there's a funny word, actually. I saw this in um, some of Apple's documentation for their products. You know, they give a lot of guidance to developers who develop on the Apple platform because mm -hmm. Apple is so design-centric. But I saw this word, it's called glanceable. And I want Time Chain Calendar, Calendar to remain glanceable. I want you to be able to just yeah. look at it quickly and get all the information you need. So the challenge is there both to try to keep everything on the viewport. That's like what you currently see. On mobile, it's near impossible. You just don't have the real estate. And so you have to have a scroll to expose more information on the page. But you know, on, on desktop especially, you can see everything's very particularly positioned so that it fits. And now if I start thinking about putting an ad of some company who likely is going to have a color scheme that's not even included in my project, and I'm going to put this thing on the page anywhere, um, it's going to be a distraction. It's going to be kind of noise amidst what I hope is a lot of signal. And um, that's really a challenge for me to feel like that's right. Now, you asked the second question is what's one of the biggest challenges? Well, you know, I, I've basically been doing this for free for <laughs> the last year and a half. Um, you know, some of that time I, I was employed. Uh, I have not been employed for quite a while now. And so um, monetizing and figuring out some way to kind of take the project to the next level and actually be able to, you know, have something that's valuable enough that people want to actually pay for it so that I have some income, that's a huge challenge. So, you know, obviously people wanting to advertise is interesting on the level of getting some income, but as far as the reality of trying to integrate something like that into the project as it currently stands, I did not feel right bringing advertisements in there. I did not feel right bringing any kind of distraction or noise into the experience that I'm trying to maintain for people who use the app. So yeah, that's, that's kind of like, uh, you know, the next phase of things for me is to, you know, work uh, really closely on on potential ways to monetize. But I'll tell you so far, my plan does not include um, monetizing directly the the web app, yeah. timechaincalendar.com. I think I'm going to try to leave that free, open, pure signal as long as I possibly can, because I don't I don't feel right about sort of throwing these other things in the mix there. And I think that kind of brings up a, a good point, right? It's like, essentially, if you're willing to pollute it, then you can extract, so to speak, value sooner than later, right? That, that That's the way I kind of see it. So it's kind of like, if you're willing to go and like muddy the waters, then, because I, I do agree with you, right? Like the second you start putting advertisers on there, uh, it, it, it becomes a challenge and it's exactly, I love that term, right. That you mentioned glanceable and, and that's, that's its allure. So I think that that kind of puts, um, it puts you into a position where you essentially have to, yeah, you, I, I'm, I, I definitely see the wrist worn calendar in the, uh, in the future. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Look, that, that, cause, cause look, I, I, I gotta be honest with you. I don't wear watches because watches are, are fucking useless. Let, let's be honest. Like I understand that they're status pieces and all that stuff Wrong. and people love to show off, but, but no, no, like, a like this to me, this is like a cool, 
yeah, fitness watches are useful, but that's not what I'm talking about, right? This is neither this is neither that. This is like something that to me is like it's like almost like a Bitcoin collectible, so to speak. And it, yeah, it, it's but I, I want to have that on, like my, on my on my watch when I'm when I'm not, you know, using it. Like okay, the two things state. I want to say. Two things oh, see, I, I don't say want about that. I want a actual thing, like the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. No, I got I, you. I, I got you. Yeah. Two things I, I, I want to say. Crap app on my iPhone, because on my iWatch. If you had talked to me six months ago, I think uh, making a, a an app for like I've been Apple talking Watch to you constantly about six months, like, hey. like every every week <laughs> hey. about this app. Hey, I, I was I was I was dead <laughs> set on prioritizing that, and. I did a bunch of research and did a deep dive on what it would take. And I discovered a few sort of yeah, it's not, not so great things. One is, is that Apple's a motherfucker and they mm-hmm. don't let you actually custom build watch faces. Nope. You can build an app. You can build these little widgets called complications, which fit into their other curated watch faces that mm-hmm. then the user would have to tap on in order to open your app. So right off the bat, some of the um, really desirable outcomes of user experience that a watch might make you think of are not actually really available. They actually make you a second-class citizen as far as the software that you create on that platform. So that's one thing. Second, I've actually also dug into several different options of, um, you know, like you were saying, Phil, like a whole um, device, a whole, uh, you know, like like a, a watch piece of hardware. Um, there's a lot of different uh, potential options there, and they all kind of suck for one reason or another. I actually just mm-hmm. recently got this device called a Bangle JS, and it's kind of like a oh yeah open open source JavaScript based yep. uh, wristwatch platform. And the damn thing is just horrible. It's like a really clunky, it, and it's, it's not it doesn't simple, give huh? you it just doesn't give you the freedom of functionality of display quality that you need it's fine for displaying a couple pieces of data but i don't know if you've noticed i'm very design oriented and the presentation really matters it does so to me to me it's not worth doing these things unless i can get them done right which is why my next phase is a slightly different target as far as platform and uh it is going to allow me to to monetize and it is going to allow me to provide an experience that's going to be gratifying for the end user and uh the the watch is still absolutely on the roadmap part of the plan it's just not the first priority right now are you looking for uh are you looking for investors um what about that angle of it right kind of i mean maybe okay. i i'm always open to any conversation if anybody wants to collaborate if anybody wants to talk about investing and those kind of things i'm open to conversations absolutely I I really am kind of intent currently on doing this myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'd love to do it myself and, you know, not necessarily be beholden to anyone else. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, real life does kick in. And um, I understand the, the uh, you know, possibilities that open up when there is uh, funding, especially in terms of the time that it takes to do these things. I'm doing everything oh. myself. You know, I'm, you... I'm one person. Stupid question. Uh, do you have a geyser fund? Have you, th- I thought about that. No, like, have you thought I about don't. That? Um, I've actually, I did speak to the geyser fund people about six yeah. months ago. Um, and so I'm, I'm aware of what their platform uh, facilitates. Uh, I just, I'm hesitant to want to like do one of these things where I kind of like ask for, for people yeah. to pay. And then I say, Oh, well, this thing is coming at some point because already just in the last six months, the timing of everything has been different than what I expected. And I don't feel good about setting any unrealistic expectations. I I'd, I'd like to actually get a handle on the execution portion of what I'm trying to build and get that working and then start figuring out how to market it and how to, you know, um, actually, you know, achieve the, the monetization and, you know, that, that, that's a whole separate process. Again, like I, it's, is not going to be on the web app, which is what people know today. I'm looking at building something entirely new. That's going to be, um, you know, different platform and, uh, have different functionality set than the current app. And, uh, at that point, it'll be, 
uh, really clear uh, if, you know, if people want to use it and if people, uh, you know, enjoy that product and if that's a, a good path for me. Very cool. Very cool. Walton, uh, I think we're going to, I think we're pretty close to wrapping up the, the fireside chat here. Yeah, I just had one more question. How many languages um, are you currently on? Because I know you've been rolling out many, many languages uh, mm. to make Time Chain Calendar accessible to, you know, many, many more millions of people around the world. Yeah, uh, I love this as well. This is one thing I'm very proud of. I have 14 languages on there, I believe. Um, and yeah. uh, I actually what, Do you know need... what percentage of the world you cover with those 14 languages? And TC's international. Well, I, I will say that, um, you know, I do have some very high level analytics. I can see, you know, um, how many visits I get and generally what region of the world they're coming from. And in my top 10 countries for visitors, I have all but one of those languages already incorporated as translations. Far and away, German Wait. is the is is number two. Uh, so you English, number one. Uh, German number Wait, two. You have one language that, like, you have one one of your top ten countries. You don't currently do their language. Which one is that? Like, I'm intrigued uh, by Dutch. that one. Dutch. I want to get. So Dutch. the Dutch come and I guess they can read the German or like they can probably understand the English as well. I, like, I just hadn't. Yeah. I hadn't found. Look, I'll, I'll, this is actually an interesting part of the project. Is that um, there are tools out there to automate uh, translation, but as we all you know, the you, can't, you can't automate, yeah. you can't automate Bitcoin language, right? Like right. You, you have to have carefully <laughs> thought out ways of explaining these things. And also because a lot of this stuff, like the language that we use in English, the word that you choose doesn't translate in the same way in another language. And you have to have a native speaker who is a Bitcoiner actually know, Oh, this is how we say that. So basically um, every single one of these uh, translations that I've had done has been done by plebs who I have mm -hmm. contacted and, and interacted with directly. And actually, um, that's one of the, the beautiful things about this is I, I couldn't have done any of these things without the help of other really committed plebs who went through and, you know, some 250 lines of, of text and, and give me good translations. Now, that being said, I have just done a massive update, which of course I introduced a bunch of new little strings. So actually there's several holes in the translations right now. If you switch to another language, you'll see bits of text that are still in English. Those have not been translated. I have to actually track down all of my translators and get them to do another round uh, once I'm ready for them to do that. So at some phase soon in the next uh, month, I expect to have a lot of those translations patched up uh, and improved. Um, you know, it's, it's just killer. I've, I've got Chinese in there. I've got Russian in there. I got Portuguese. I got, uh, German, um, the, the Italian, French, uh, the, the, the percentage of the world that's covered by these translations is what really inspires me to keep going. I, I have some people that have said they're, they're willing to do, um, Hindi and Gujarat to try to get the, the, uh, Indian billions that are out there, uh, cool. translations. So that's the plan. Eventually I'm going to be basically adding Dutch, adding Hindi. Um, you know, I've got Arabic in there. It's just like, there, there's kind of just this like mission that emerges once you get this question. far and you're Quick like, question. I've got to, I've got to get as much of the planet covered as possible. You said you have Arabic. I know Arabic is red as in like, right to left, read it. right to left. Yes. Arabic on Chengdu, does it oh. rotate the other way? No, no, it does not. The interface goes the same direction, <clears throat> but the text is read the opposite direction. So in a few places, like especially um, the labels on the circles, it, it's a little counterintuitive, the arrows on the, right. the opposite side that it would be if it was done the other way. It, You know, I, I talked to, this is again, the benefit of doing this with plebs. I talked to um, my translators. And I'm like, well, do we need to make the interface go the other way? And what I found out is that these people who read these right to left languages, when it comes to translations from English, they're very accustomed to this kind of compromise. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, the language is actually written out right to left, but the orientation of the UI is, is maybe going still the English direction and they're, they're not tripped up by that. So, you know, it's, it's kind of a usability concern. Is 
Is and it cool the kind of like, random things you get to learn by working with Bitcoiners on random things? Like it's like such a it's like, wild. niche thing. It's cool. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Cultural yep. enrichment. There is no Bitcoin community. No. Nope. Yeah. Yep. There isn't. There, there, there really isn't. That's just a shit. Hey, you know, before we move on too, I, I, I can't yeah. mention the languages without mentioning uh, the currencies. I've got uh, about 20 currencies in there too. You can switch from USD to um, a lot of very interesting currencies. If you want to oh, see the exchange rate, you know, <laughs> the exchange rate, the exchange rate is, is a one little corner of the app. I, I really don't like focusing too much on that. Um, but you know, it is something people look at. I actually forget that you can check the price. <laughs> yeah. I forget that you can actually check yeah. the price on time gen, on time gen well, No, let me correct you there, Walton. There is no such thing as price. There is an exchange. Right, rate. you can check the exchange. Okay. Right? No, I always I yeah. always do this with Phil. Yeah, well, yeah. Done. Yep. good job. It took a long good time. Job. It took a very me. long time. But uh, yeah, before we wrap up the uh, before we wrap up the fireside chat, TC, how does everybody find you? How do they find Time Chain Calendar? Show your links. Yeah, man. Um, well, I got some of the best SEO in the business. Try going to your favorite search engine and start typing in the word time chain. And you'll see before you finish the word time chain calendars popping up as a suggestion. Uh, so you can find me at timechaincalendar.com. That's where the app exists. It is a web app currently. Uh, as I said before, there will be some new products on some additional platforms. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. If you want to stay up to date with what's happening on the project, I highly recommend you follow the official time chain calendar Twitter account, Twitter mm -hmm. X, whatever the hell people call it these days. Uh, the handle there is at time chain Cal C A L. So um, that is the official uh, Twitter account of the project. And I absolutely announce uh, everything meaningful related to the progress of the project there. So if you want to know about what's coming uh, you can follow that account. And then um, my personal account on the on the Twitter and the X is at meditation underscore man. The name you'll see is TC. Uh, that's me. That's my personal account. Uh, opinions there are my own. Uh, you might get a go fuck yourself or uh, something that you might not expect if you follow that account. So um, just heads up. And then I'm also on Noster. And on Noster, I am... Uh, under the NIP05 TC at timechaincalendar.com. So that is actually how you can find me on Noster. And the account that I, I run on Noster is kind of a, a bit of a fusion between those two Twitter accounts that I mentioned. Uh, it's mostly Time Chain Calendar stuff these days, but uh, some personal opinions slip in there. Um, and, uh, you know, I really am a big fan of Noster and I think everybody needs to like get on there and create a, a Noster, uh, pub key and, and, you know, start using this open decentralized, um, network that is really just blossoming at this point. There's incredible stuff going on there. So those are the best ways to find me, uh, Noster and Twitter and, uh, at timechaincalendar.com. And that's the biz. Sweet. We are going to put all of that in the show notes. Guys, it wraps up the fireside chat. We're going to move it on over to wrecked. I mean, it's it's not unexpected that things are just going to get cringier and cringier as legacy finance joins the crypto, the crypto space. I know we'd all love to imagine that they're here for Bitcoin, but let's be honest. Uh <laughs> They're just here. They're just here for whatever it is that brings attention to whatever shitty products they can sell. And on that note, we have this ridiculous tweet from Van Eck. And mark my words, I'm telling you guys, you're going to see this bull run. The legacy, the legacy finance system is going to pump the hell out of absolute garbage, and people are going to get wrecked beyond belief. Don't say we didn't warn you. Also, on that same note, I am here for this. So here we go. Tweet from Van Eck. Important topics we're discussing at the board. And of course, this ridiculous, uh, this ridiculous meme uh, mo mostly just works for the shit coiners. Um, and that's exactly who it's meant. That, that's exactly who it's meant to uh, to draw in. Right. Hey, guys, Van Eck's on your side. They're going to make a whole bunch of vapor tokens that they're going to pump and dump. And uh, yeah, you're going to get to uh, you're going to get to enjoy holding the minus 98 um, percent. Speaking of minus 98 percent. Speaking of, yeah, that's right. We're going to take a look at this Casper crap. Um, so these are the new people pretending to be the better Bitcoin. Not that we haven't seen this before, and I'm sure we'll see this again. 
uh, marathon. It's kind of funny because I, I saw I saw this ridiculous comment from some shitcoiner like pretending like guys I, I don't know if I, I don't know if altcoiners know this but like just because somebody or a company mines Bitcoin, we're not simp's for them. We don't give a shit that they mine Bitcoin or they don't mine Bitcoin. It doesn't matter. Like, so the ridiculousness where, you know, people are sitting there and they're like, oh, you know, I mean, look, yeah, sure. It's disappointing that Marathon goes and is doing this, but they're incentivized. Maybe this is what people mean when they say there is no Bitcoin community. It's that we're like, yeah. we're not automatically accepting no, not. of you just because you're doing something in Bitcoin. Thank like, you. But yeah. Thank you. Exactly. So it's like Case in point think, ordinals. Yeah. It, right? It, exactly. And and people have used that as an excuse against us, too, where it's like, well, wait a second. You said if something useful uh, was was made on a shit chain that that it, it could get ported over to Bitcoin. Spoiler alert. JPEGs you don't own are not fucking something useful that should be ported over. It's just a grift. OK, <laughs> it's not changing the world. Anyways. Anyways. All right. All right. Last piece. Last piece to wreck before we talk about all of this garbage. This one I thought was absolutely hilarious. And this is, you know what? When I see people using credentialization in real time to essentially try to coerce you into believing they're right, this is a beautiful indicator of how scared shitless and how people like, like Nancy just have nothing left. They've got nothing left in their empty bag of tricks. Here we go. Let's, let's take a listen. And then you look at something else. People are concerned about uh, inflation. 16 Nobel laureates came out this week and said that if what's his name were elected president with his fiscal policies, inflation would just increase enormously in our country. And you have Joe Biden on the other side of that. Okay. This isn't a, a politics thing. I don't give a shit about politics. Most people. What? This. Yeah, dude, th you heard that, right? So just think, just, just let, let's picture in our head, right? That tweet with the, with the Walmart guy. Okay. Who did his shopping list in 20, what was it? 2020, right? It was like 124 bucks or something or $144. And then all of a sudden in 2024, no, I think it was 2022. 22. I think it was only two years ago. Okay. Two years ago. Right. And then all of a sudden it's $400. So we're looking at over 300%. Uh, you know, in, in terms of in, in terms of price, in terms of price growth for the same 45 items he bought two years before. And 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 you're going to sit there and pretend like, the, number one, these experts matter. Number two, inflation hasn't been destroying people's purchasing power already. It's does it, I don't I just find this infuriating. TC, what are your uh, I don't know if you saw that video already. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, look, it, it, it's. It's also kind of very thematic that the way that she was trying to even describe what she was saying was so contrived and forced. She couldn't even find the words to like try to express what she's trying to express because it, it's really not real what she's trying to express there. And uh, that's kind of <laughs> that's kind of like a thematically um along the same lines as far as the the some of the debate performance stuff that we saw uh yesterday as far as you know people who have been putting blinders on to the real nature of you know who's leading things uh they seem to all of a sudden surprise they they seem to see the same thing that a lot of the rest of us have been seeing for years already so yeah i think that's kind of the common theme and it, it just as with the uh inflation topic it's like everybody wants to get you to believe that it's uh, it's not a problem when they're running the show and that when the other person's running the show, uh, that's when it's really going to hurt. And that's just not the facts. She knows she's lying. I, and you could see it. I, I totally agree with you. Reading that body language, the hesitation, right? It, it's not it, It's not that she doesn't know what she's saying. She knows exactly what she's saying, right? Like it's, it's the fact that, she, you know, like they know they're lying and we know they know they're lying and they know we know they know they're lying. <laughs> so it's, it's that whole thing. Walton, what are your, uh, what are your thoughts on all of this? Did you, did you even see that Van Eck thing? What did you think of that? You know, so like are the, are these the, the same course? guys that are applying for a Solana? Uh, yes, ETF? it is. Like, Bingo. Like, I thought they, they, they seem kind of half based. They had like a, <clears throat> sorry. They had like a frog, like like early on, right? Like they yes. were, they 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 seemed to be the like one tradfire that could meme, and we were people were I don't know. 
I, I'm sure. I'm sure we were in praise of them. Like, yeah, no, no, for know. a minute. Sure. Um, I don't think we were though. Tried I don't fight think does we what? Tried fight does. Hey, we've got a product. <laughs> we take fees. Hey, we got a product. We take fees. Hey, we got a product. We take fees and no risk. And yeah, the, the tried fight does what? Tried fight does. Thank you. What are your uh, What are your guys' thoughts on? Uh... On, on this idea that essentially this this bull run and more specifically the uh, the crypto the the crypto space is going to be led by legacy finance. Do you think that there's any truth to to me saying that? Do you do you think one hundred hey, one hundred? So? Yeah. I mean, look look they the they, have, the they they have jumped at the chance for Bitcoin ETFs because they see the opportunity to productize these things just like Walton was describing um they they see this as just a new buffet to feed upon and there's no reason in their minds why there's any separation between bitcoin and and all the shit um we see ethereum uh etfs we see solana etfs getting proposed and you know these things are it, it's just count on it count on it that uh, the the folks that have made very long very uh, fruitful careers out of de making derivatives of every single thing possible. They're going to make derivatives of this stuff. They're going to productize these things and they're going to pick up on the marketing angle. You know, that's what we know. Like shit coins are mostly uh, just a lot of marketing. And uh, that's what I think they're going to, they're going to really um, try to play up, which is sad because the opportunity to discover um, you know, the real virtues of Bitcoin by a wider audience, I think, is going to really get fogged by that. It's going to be a lot of noise. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely uh, obviously I agree. It's uh, it's going to be a roller coaster ride, guys. It's going to be it's definitely going to be a roller coaster ride. And that is going to wrap up wrecked. And we're going to move it on over to the Hopium. The Hopium! Hopium is sponsored by BTC Pins. BTC Pins make the finest metal pins in Bitcoin. If you go to btcpins.com, you can see their wide selection of collaborations with some of your favorite Bitcoin brands and many more. Uh, on the screen right now, you should be able to see four pins. Uh, three are on my hat, and there is a further pin. We have the Pleb Underground pin, the Zeus pin, pin my favorite lightning wallet and ahmed get the stones um uh, a public uh, campaign for um btc pins makes a time chain calendar behavior. pin too by the way they do actually i have i have i have one it's uh somewhere in this room uh right now with me anyway uh if you go to btcpins.com and use the code pleb you can get a discount on the pins no can't do that oh well, well uh I pleb underground they have to use pleb the underground. Pleb underground. Thank you, so if you go to no pcpins.com and use the code pleb underground you'll get a discount on all of the pins once again that's btcpins.com a few stories for you this week on hopium the first story reported by bitcoin magazine in latin america uh, digital bank Nubank is integrating the Bitcoin Lightning Network for its 100 million customers. What does this really mean? Uh, blah, 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 synergy, blah, 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 platforms, blah, 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 developer tools. Um, uh, it seems like they're integrating LightSpark. Um, and I think oh, what this means is they're all going to have Lightning addresses, I think or something you know it's, it's that sort of thing but like are they actually going to all be using using lightning um, um... is it light spark so. or clean spark i always or no, no, those it was, just it two was separate light, ones light spark it was those light are two spark, separate yeah. ones yeah it is light spark okay yeah the the one with uh, david marcus is 
clean spark. I no, believe. no, that's light spark. That's light that spark. is light spark. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. I always get the two confused. I think, I think I think clear spark or something like that is like is that like an energy or mining thing? Light oh, that's spark right. The, light spark is the is the is the lightning um, is the LSP right? They're a lightning service provider, but like targeted at uh, corporate and, and commercial yeah. enterprise. enterprise. Enterprise didn't Coinbase integrate lightning with correct? Light yeah, spark? That's right. They, right. Apparently right. they couldn't do it on their own for some oh. reason. They're ridiculous all on their own. Let's be honest. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure it's 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 anything of 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 meaning here. Um, but we shall see. I mean, we shall it, see. It's better than them not using it, right? Um, but then, of course, you'll always have the 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 people that are arguing about centralization, right? So, all right. Yeah, yeah, this Can't make is everybody true. happy. And, like up up next, I want to share um um some bullshit from Fred <laughs> Krueger, right? So, um like like so Dopium. what does he say? He says so this there's this power law like wanker who's like oh, some gosh. I don't know some like it's like a semi smart guy that just doesn't understand Bitcoin, whatever. It's just like oh yeah, as time goes on, Bitcoin price goes on, and I'm gonna draw some like spirals and fractals bunch of bullshit like but anyway this this guy has has an idea of, oh this is what bitcoin's going to do over time and there's some you know colored bands and blah 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 and fred um said that uh they did an experiment together he said uh, we shifted the power law curve additively in log space to hit a standard 68 percent and 95 percent statistical points if you're not familiar with these these numbers 68 percent if you have a normal distribution 68 percent of the data points are within uh sorry 68 percent of the data points are within one standard deviation either side of the mean as in you've got like 34 percent either way uh, and then 95 percent is then within two standard deviations um uh, and they're saying, therefore, the one sigma band is 54k to 228k, and two sigma band 43k to 533k. So, um, some some bullish ideas about about where potentially the price could go next year. Um, but down here, he says the point of this is that we have a 68% of the chance of a chance to be within 54k and 228k by end of 20. 25 and there's a 32 percent chance of deviating but less than a two percent chance of being above 533k wrong 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 you're a fucking idiot this is not how statistics work right if if the the concept the concept of doing like uh, statistical modeling and then collecting data you then evaluate whether your model is, is is real or not right if you if you if you get numbers that are that are at the extremes of the model right like in your critical regions then you need to reject your null hypothesis right you need to say oh our current model might be flawed if if these extreme probability events are happening like I, I and these I don't know I just I'm I'm, I'm semi speechless here now at this point but yeah. like it ha, like how how can these like tradfi guys just really not under, get statistics like I because we're going to the moon statistics? Walton I, like moon moon math up I don't, I don't the mind right. the moon stuff but it's like you, you the the model doesn't guarantee the percentages like that's just not how the world. Works. Ah, but it gets the clicks, it gets the eyeballs, it gets the likes. It, it's okay. So look, I, I do want to point out to the what the what TC just said. Okay, everybody complains about like all of this hype, hyperbole, and 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 all of this crap. But the reality is, is that is exactly what it is. Okay, if you don't, if you don't, um, if you don't provide that type of hopium. In, in conjunction with some famous person or some quote-unquote prestigious person or well-respected person or whatever it is, somebody recognizable, nobody will pay attention. That is the truth. It's too bad. Uh, but going back to this this whole thing about, look, uh, Fred Krueger, I mean, uh, I, I wasn't even aware of him back when he was shilling EOS. Um, and then this cycle, I became aware of him uh, because he popped up into my feed during the bear market uh, with all of his ridiculous nonsense. Then he started to shill Thorchain. And look, he's a great hopium cheerleader, but unfortunately, these are the people that get people wrecked. Okay, like for real, these are the people that get people completely overly excited, okay, about possibilities. And by doing this, you're 
It's people who usually don't have enough conviction in the research that they've done about Bitcoin. So they do not have what it takes to actually understand when you see these market fluctuations and to be able to hodl through those fluctuations, number one. Number two, have the conviction if, they, if they're in the position to, to increase their position in Bitcoin savings, right? So I, I think these guys do way more of a disservice. I, I know that, you know, I know that there's a lot of people that will disagree with me on that and be like, yeah, well, how many people did you bring to Bitcoin and da, 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 you know, and all that shit. But you know what? I'm sorry. Creating a wrecked, uh, creating a wrecked person does not equal a, does not equal adoption. And like, in my eyes, bringing people to Bitcoin and understanding Bitcoin's value proposition, if anything, it just, I, I think it, I, I think it throws them. It just throws them off and pushes them away. But. Yeah, I I want to I want to agree with that last part because it's mm. um, I think a lot of Bitcoiners have experience prior to uh, becoming maximalists and mm -hmm. they experiment and they trade and a lot of people get wrecked because most people do get wrecked and I think it's the few that actually uh, overcome that and stick around. Most people when they get wrecked. That's it. You turn, they're out, they're never coming back. And in fact, they'll tell everybody they know, oh, that stuff's a scam, stay away. So that is the flip side, is yeah. that you know people at this stage of the cycle are just concerned with getting a ton of attention and getting a bunch of reach. But if you set unrealistic expectations for people and you don't fill in all the nuance about how is the way to reduce risk, in this scenario, well, yeah, you're setting up a ton of people to get wrecked, and that literally does the opposite from adoption. It turns people off. Yeah, yeah, it 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 really does. And uh, you know, I I'm not just it's not necessarily about Fred Krueger the person. You know, he may be a nice guy and everything like that. I'm talking about the messaging, right? This is what we are talking about. We're talking about the messaging and how that messaging affects people. And I'm grouping other people in with the uh, with him, right? Like other people like Plan B. You know, I was one of those people when I first came to, and then there's this other guy, the, the hash ribbons guy, you know, like they, they come up with all of this stuff. And like, look, when you don't know enough, it sounds awesome, but it totally sets you up for failure. Anyway, sorry, Walton, you, you happen to pick a topic that I, it, it really pisses me off. So I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate it. Cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I'm going to finish with just like one one little clip here and like this guy does good memes i think sometimes he steals them and i think def i think might be might be like a i don't know some like nft bro but like he does uh -oh. does do good memes um some hopium apparently this is a the point of view you're a crypto investor in 2027 Yeah, so um, I don't get it. That's it. How do I buy some Bas of that, Walter? Yeah. Basically, <laughs> basically, this is this is it. Like you, like you need to, you need to buy some. What did I say? I said this like last week. I said buying, buying Bitcoin is easy. Like, like what? Like not being a retard with it once you've got it. That's the difficult bit. Yeah. Um, and, and I. That, that's a good point. And, and just don't be a retard with your Bitcoin, and you can have that too, sir. And that's it for Opium. So, uh, yeah. That's awesome. Thank that's you. That's awesome. Okay, before before we wrap up Hopium though, um, I, I just I just want to say I, I just want to say something on that topic about not being a retard once you once you have it. So look, the person right, the the mindset and the person that got you stacking right, that that gets somebody stacking and that gets somebody to save in Bitcoin is not necessarily the same mindset that is required to be a good custodian of Bitcoin. So, just to agreeing with your point. TC, you have any uh, any final thoughts here on uh, what Walton just showed before we wrap it up? Yeah, I mean, it kind of reminds me of something I tweeted, I think, a day ago. Um, something like, uh, you, you don't have to be a genius. Just don't be a fucking dumbass.
Bitcoin only. That's truth. Wisdom. That's right, guys. See, we even threw some wisdom into the Hopium. Good stuff, Walton. Good stuff. Guys, that wraps up the Hopium, like Walton said. And it wraps up the show. Ah, don't forget to check us out on our audio-only platforms. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor. If you want to stream a sats, check us out on Fountain.fm. Help us grow. Walton, how do we end this? Fuckshitcoins.com. Please like and subscribe. We will see you next week. Peace. Peace. Oh, yeah.